part two of the uh, fault finding on the Pioneer A400. Um, in the previous video uh, we found that the amplifier was uh, operating its protection circuitry intermittently. It would actually go unstable occasionally when I was at home listening to it. it and it's possibly, I'm not 100% sure, may have damaged my sound card. Um, it could be a loading problem with the uh, sound card on the old amplifier I'm using at the moment. But um, sounds very distorted from the sound card. I can't confirm that, it seems unlikely. However, we've uh, been tracking down the problem with the uh, supply, because it, it seemed to be that it was common to uh, both the rails. And if you look here, what, we've, what I've been doing is been going through and checking all these supply voltages. And this, it, this I've got a bit of drawing here, I'll make it a bit clearer. Where are we? I'll revert with this one. We've got this, these two transistors here, a little regulator. So that's your plus, plus regulator. And that's your minus regulator. <clears throat> so basically, current is regulated to the preamplifier through these two transistors. That's your minus rail, and this is your plus plus rail. And your 0 volt rail is sitting in between somewhere down here. It's not very easy to see on this circuit diagram. Um, and what I was doing was I was getting checking the voltages around the transistors. Let's have a look at the other page I was looking at. Okay, this is a bit of an easier place to see it. Um, I was checking, this is a plus supply here, regulated, and our minus supply regulated is here. I was checking voltages on these long tail pairs, and there was a, all the voltages are totally out of spec. They were like sort of 20, 25 volts, uh, and they're just charging up as you switched it on, the voltage was coming up and up and up. Um, so straight away that was wrong, there's something wrong there, either there's a 0 volt connection missing. My first mind was, well it's, it's common to both channels, it's got to be a, it's got to be a power supply problem of, of some description. So I went around and checking all the power supply and it all seemed to be okay. Um, so I, and then I came along and had a look at this side here and found that there was no minus 38 volts on any of these connections here. And eventually, after a long, long time trying to find this transistor, which was really hard to find because it was a silk screen so tiny on this, sorry, on this, on this transistor here, the silk screen was so small, um, it was very difficult to find. I found that there was no voltage at all uh, coming out of here. So I removed the transistor, uh, and the transistor was open circuit. Now that's probably been like that since I've had the amplifier um, working at home. It's, as I say, it never sounded quite right. Uh, and it did intermittently trip the protection circuitry, especially if you're driving at a high level or um, occasionally just do it off, off its own back. It seemed to be when it was damp, and that would sort of make sense because if this is all sort of open circuit here, the thing would just pull up. Uh, when it's supposed to be a 0 volt rail, it would all pull up positive and cause all sorts of instability in the amplifier. All the, all the output transistors would be uh, biased all over the place. So I, I tried to find another transistor. This is a 2SA992. Uh, and we couldn't find one, I couldn't find one in my box, but I found an, an equivalent transistor, uh, popped it in, initially powered it up, ran it up, and it looked a lot better, the protection circuitry tripped straight back in, which it hadn't, it had actually stopped turn, turning on altogether, uh, but the protection relay released, um, and I tried to drive it up, and I drove it up until just before clipping, and it was, it was a lot better, but it was still asymmetrical, so I'm thinking, well, there's still something wrong with the power supply. So I started measuring some volts across the rails on the negative rail here and the positive rail for comparison. And obviously the incoming voltages to the collectors were good, but the output of the, this transistor was low. And I'm thinking, well, it's obviously got to be drawing too much current. So I started probing around. I couldn't really see anything drawing excessive current through any of these, uh, these series resistors, these 100 ohm resistors. They all seemed similar, um, both sides. On the, the right-hand channel and the, and the uh, left-hand channel, they all seemed similar. So I thought, well, maybe there's something wrong with the transistor. So I was looking at the transistor, sort of looking at the circuit, and then realised, stupidly, I put the bloody transistor around the wrong way. So I unsold the transistor, resolded it back in, and this is our result. So I've checked everything else. Everything else seems okay. Uh, I know people say that these caps and amplifiers need to be capping after sort of 10 years. It's a load of rubbish. They don't. I've checked the capacitors on these. They've got low ESR. Um, this amplifier has probably had quite a lot of use. Um, they're high quality capacitors in an amplifier like this, especially the sort of higher end transistor amplifiers, uh, like this, this particularly this Pioneer. Um, they, they didn't use crap components in these, they used, you know, good quality um, Mitsubishi capacitors um, uh, and a couple of Rubicons and things like that inside. It's 
because it was designed as a hi-fi amplifier. Um, so let's have a look now. We run it again with the uh, HP8903 and we'll see what we get on the waveform. We just push it, it's still got that slightly noisy pot. Pushing it hard, there we go, and we got some symmetrical clipping. That's into eight ohms. Nice symmetrical clipping. No active activation of the protection really. Let's just check the other channel. And basically I'm checking on the center of the emitter followers. This is basically the output of the transistor amplifier output stage prior to going through its uh, inductors and things like that. So just select a different channel on the uh, spectrum audio analyzer. So we look at that channel and as you can see it's pretty good. So I suppose what I could do is I could do a frequency response sweep with the uh, 8903 uh, just to see what the uh, response of the amplifier is like. Uh, Total harmonic distortion run might be a good idea as well as we have changed a couple of transistors. Um, and then once it's uh, warmed up, I'll get it hot, let it settle down to ambient temperature and then I'll set the quiescent current. Um, that's another big fad that everyone's saying on oh, these amplifiers, you need to turn the quiescent current right up. Makes no difference at all. All it does is it cooks the transistors up. If the transistors are conducting, they're conducting. It's as simple as that. You won't get any reduction in sound. Uh, in distortion for increasing a transistor that's on, you know, it's uh, that's as simple as that. You, you, if you can, if you think you can hear it's better, well, that's up to you. Turn the, you can turn the biasing up. I've tried this and fooled myself into thinking I could hear any difference, but the figures say there's no difference on the uh, response, so I don't think it's worth trying. Anyway, I'm just going to set up the uh, 8903 and we'll do a frequency response. So 25 hertz, 30 hertz. We're just watching for a dB shift on output. It's one kilohertz. We're not worried about the minus 5.5 dB, that's just where we started from reference point. You can see it's a very slight high frequency gain, but its roll off is about 0.6 of a dB from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz, so that's excellent. Uh, we can measure power before clipping. It's quite easy to do on this because you just have to enter a special function. Cool, the amp fire starting to smell quite hot actually. Also, I'm driving it quite hard into a a, a load, um, a, a, a static load, a resistive load. Um, where are we? I thought it was 41.0 special function, but that's the reset command, isn't it? So I think 19.0. Yeah, 19.0 special function will give me power in watts into 8 ohms. So, uh, 19.0 special. Let's see what it will do. Okay, let's just uh, let's drop it to frequency to 1 kilohertz. So we're driving both channels into 8 ohms. Get it just off clipping. And turn the ratio off would help. Well, that's not right. 41.0 special. No, I've just reset it again. I need to get au fait with this thing again. I haven't used it for so long. Amplitude 400 millivolts. It's got yeah, a signal back. Right, it's 19.0 special function. And that should display what's in the right hand channel. Yes, it is now, good. Okay, just off from clipping. Fifth, just under 60 watts RMS um, into uh, 8 ohms, which is uh, just above what the spec says. So it looks like it's been repaired. Um, all it was was a little transistor, little, uh, one of these regulation transistors inside here had gone faulty uh, and what it was doing was it was just allowing the pre-amplifier to uh, shift up positive and half the transistors were being turned off. Uh, the power amplifier stage was actually working absolutely fine but the input it was getting was distorted and unbalanced. Um, 
we'll carry on after this I'll do a I won't do this on camera but I'll just do a biasing uh, calibration on the on the unit I'm going to set uh, a 25 millivolt uh, potential between the two outer uh, resistor leads of this uh, these emitter followers um, and that should be absolutely fine for the amplifier and, and then I can box it back up take it home and carry on using it anyway thanks for watching uh, and uh, more to come